Well, something strange is happening in the Senate tonight. Bombshell story at the United States Senate. It's amazing that President Trump can still manage to win and have control over the United States Senate and not even be president anymore. That's because what we saw today is yet another Republican senator to fall. This time, it's Missouri Senator Roy Blunt, who you may recall was out in front alongside of, uh, alongside of Minnesota Senator uh, Amy Klobuchar during the inauguration ceremony for President Joe Biden. Well, Roy Blunt announcing this afternoon that he is not going to run for the United States Senate once again, and yet another shoe to fall for Republican senators under Mitch McConnell's control. Here was his announcement just a short time ago, and there's kind of two competing storylines unfolding this afternoon. On the one hand, it's the uh, moderate Democrats, it's the middle-of-the-road Democrats in Joe Manchin who are really running the Senate and really running the Democratic Party at this point, and it's the uh, the, the non-Trump wing of the Republican Party starting to collapse. So what does this mean for the future of the party? What does this mean for the future of you being able to get minimum wage increases, um, uh, continuing stimulus? Um, all of these things are in play right now. But this is a bombshell story this afternoon. So here is Senator Roy Blunt in his little going away message outside of a barn. I love they always have to stand in front of a barn. When my daddy milked cows... Here was his message. After 14 general election victories, three to county office, seven to the United States House of Representatives, and four statewide elections, I won't be a candidate for re-election to the United States Senate next year. I want to thank my family and thank the great team that came together to help me work for you. Most importantly, thanks to Missourians, whether you voted for me or not, for the opportunity to work for you and a better future for our state and our country. There's still a lot to do, and I look forward to every day this year and next year as I continue to work for you in the Senate. Another lesson I learned here, finish strong, and I intend to. Thanks for giving me the chance to work for you. Okay, a lot to unpack here. That's uh, Missouri Senator Roy Blunt. After 14 general election victories, three to county office, seven to the United States House of Representatives, four to statewide elections, I won't be candidate for re-election to the United States Senate next year. Now, this is the fifth, count them, one, two, three, four, five, fifth GOP senator to retire so far in this election cycle. Why? Coincidence? He's 71 years old, nowhere near the level of Chuck Grassley, who's 87 years old from Iowa, who just announced that he is forming a committee to start to run for his next re-election. Why? It's because these Mitt Romney, middle-of-the-road Republicans, their days are numbered when you're up against Trumpism. That's exactly what's happening here. All you need to do is read through the comments on his announcement on YouTube just read the comments field after he announced he was retiring. Person after person after person saying, I guess you can't hang with the Trumpism of your party. Blunt is the chair of the uh, Senate Republican Policy Committee. He's the ranking member on the rules. He has uh, seats on the appropriations. He has seats on the uh, commerce. Um, what else? Um, oh, the Intelligence Committee. This is a huge blow to Mitch McConnell as Senate Minority Leader. And by the way, we don't even know if Mitch McConnell is going to run again. He's already floated a list, apparently, of people that he's going to have take over for him. So could Mitch McConnell be out? Again, these are the echoes of President Trump reverberating through the party. Like, what is the future of this party now? Make no mistake about it. This is a big deal for the GOP. This could tilt the balance of power in favor of Democrats. He's running again in 2020. He, you know, he was up against to run in 2022. We're, you know, where are we right now? We're in 2021. So we've got a short window here. And every Republican voted against stimulus. Every single Republican voted against bringing stimulus to the American people. How do you run on that? Like, if you're in the state of Missouri, how do you run on? Like, I'm Roy Blunt. I'm the guy that didn't really work for you because 
I didn't bring you stimulus. I didn't vote for a minimum wage increase. And sure, I'm standing here in front of a barn because I'm a man of the people and I like to milk cows. But I don't really give a shit about you. I like my special interest money. And guess what? That's probably going to go to a Trump candidate. So I'm seeing the writing on the wall. Bye-bye. I don't want to be a part of this party anymore. What you're seeing is this old, middle-of-the-road, Romney-style Republican starting to evaporate from the Republican Party. You know, he is a former House Majority Whip. Before coming to the Senate, Blunt uh, had been considered by some as a potential replacement for McConnell. I mean, I can't tell you how much of a bombshell this is. He could have become the Senate Minority Leader, the Senate Majority Leader. The fact that he's like, bye-bye. Like, Washington is in shock tonight because of this. Blunt has been considered by some as this replacement. But that's not going to happen now. Um, a number of possible replacements are already being now floated. On the Republican side, there's NASCAR driver Carl Edwards, a former governor who left in a scandal, Eric Retiens. Um, You also have uh, Lieutenant Governor Mike Kehoe expected to take a look at this. Attorney General uh, Eric Schmidt. Also, you have Jay Ashcroft, the son of John Ashcroft, former Attorney General. Um, also wants to be in the, in the mix, Representative Ann Wagner. Uh, possible opportunities here. But all of that being said, right now, the 2022 roadmap for Republicans is in disarray. And it's not getting any easier. All those GOP-held seats, like in Pennsylvania, let's talk about Pat Toomey not running, North Carolina, Ron Johnson, who, of course, has come out like, you know, against stimulus. He's been a, a f f uh, you know, faces a huge re-election and a tough re-election in Wisconsin, Ron Johnson. Um, uh, let's see, let's talk about Florida. Has been trending red there, maybe. Um, should help Marco Rubio there. However, Republicans do have to pick up their, uh, seats in Arizona, Georgia, Nevada, New Hampshire. But then, of course, Trump is out there right now threatening all of these primaries to people like uh, Lisa Murkowski. Uh, he could jump into the mix on people like, uh, like Susan Collins. So there's a lot at play here for Republicans in all of this right now. McConnell is losing members of his total inner posse that he's known for years. Um, he's in control right now for as long as he wants to be. But then you've got Rob Portman and you had a uh, Roy Blunt who were in leadership positions and now they're retiring. What about Senator Richard Shelby of Arizona or excuse me, Alabama? Um, he's departing at the end of next year. John Thune is up for reelection. There's no sign that he's leaving, but Trump would love to get someone up against John Thune. So again, Trump, the specter of Trump is floating over Republicans tonight with the departure of Roy Blunt. Now, let's talk about on the Democratic side, because we have some moving and shaking happening right now on this House bill on stimulus that's about to move to the House of Representatives tonight. And a vote could come as early as tomorrow if no progressives stick their neck into this thing and say, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Why are we not pushing for a $15 an hour minimum wage increase? So, how to stop the Manchin presidency and raise the minimum wage, David Sirota writes. Dems must vote down the must-pass COVID bill until it includes the wage increase, which they can add right now. He writes that Dems have the opportunity right now that they can push to add in the minimum wage increase into the bill. Some have argued, he says, that the way to fix this situation is by ending the filibuster. But that's a catch-22, he says. It's absolutely a necessary reform, but President Manchin, he calls him President Manchin, is pledging to veto it. Even if Democrats were to eliminate the filibuster, they would still need Manchin's stamp of approval for virtually all legislation, given the Senate's current 50-50 split. The way to fix this dynamic is for a decisive number of House Democrats or Democratic senators to make clear that there's a line in the sand, demonstrate that they will vote down Democratic legislation that does not honor those demands. And they must do this specifically because they have no de uh, Rep Republican support. So it's amazing to watch Joe Manchin, who is really, and I've mentioned this now a number of times on the show, He's really, for all intents and purposes, the president of the Democratic Party. 
and going on this interview with Axios the other night and saying that, you know, he really wishes, you know, Dem- you know Republicans aren't going to vote for this thing, but he really wishes that they would be a part of the conversation. And he wants to make sure that on this $4 trillion stimulus, this new infrastructure bill that's set to be unveiled in the next few days, that he wants Republicans involved in the process. Why? Why is he kowtowing to Republicans? Here he is defending himself in multiple interviews this weekend. Just watch him try to bat away at you know, uh, interview after interview, asking him why he was kowtowing to Republicans. It's a remarkable series of interviews to watch. There was nothing that I wanted more than to have a balanced bill. And that was something that came into it the last minute. I thought it was something that more than what we ever agreed on or intended. And these things happen when such a mammoth piece of legislation is put together. So I said, that's not something I can agree with. I don't think it's it's where we're going. It's what we're needing for put this package together in a very responsible way. So we started talking and all of a sudden everything came to a halt because they realized I would not vote for the procedure or the process that was in place at that time. But there's never a hill to die on. We can fix everything. All I did was. So what he's talking about is the reconciliation process. Like, look, uh, unless we're going to have a targeted threshold for those stimulus checks, we're going to lower that amount so that it's not going out to people that are making, you know, more than 75,000. Like those people, my God, those are people just super wealthy, right? In his eyes, these are, oh, we can't, no way. So he controls everything right now. So once we knew that we, you know, I, I'm not going to support this, everything came to a grinding halt. I couldn't believe it. I was so surprised by this. Try to make sure that we were targeting where the help was needed. We're going to make sure that we're recovering in 2022 also, so we don't have a lapse or a relapse. I've been voting the same way for the last 10 years. I look for that moderate middle, the common sense that comes with the moderate middle is who I am. A lot. Of- right. The moderate middle. The moderate middle is the weak way out. It's the no backbone moderate middle. It's the I'm going to kowtow to corporate donations moderate middle. That's exactly what it is. It's the worst of Washington. It's the I don't have a backbone. I don't have a I'm not going to stand up for you. I'm going to stand up for corporate donors who want demands of me because they're donating millions of dollars to me at the expense of you. That's the middle, right? So what that means is that these billionaires, these millionaires who funnel money to me, Joe Manchin, I'm going to compromise and come to where they are on a position. And the people that have no voice, the people that have no money have not donated to my campaign. You are going to get screwed. That's the moderate middle. One of the things I was able to get into that bill and target the bill the way we talked about came because of negotiations and talk with my Republican and Democrat colleagues. First of all, let me be very clear about that statement there, you piece of garbage. The targeted reduction of stimulus checks, I was able to get into the bill because I negotiated with my Republican colleagues. What the F are you talking about? So let me be clear. Republicans who have arguably no power during these negotiations through the reconciliation process, we didn't need one of their votes to get this through. You negotiated with them to get a lower targeted stimulus check passed to the American people, the minority party who voted Not one of them voted for this bill. So if in these negotiations with these Republicans, you guys came to some sort of compromise, and yet in the end, they didn't vote for one, not one of them in the House or the Senate voted for this bill for for stimulus for the American people. Not a one. So I don't get it. My mind is blown. Really. I mean, you, you negotiated with Republicans to get a narrow targeted stimulus check out to the American people. Hey, way to go. It's like, you know, you're negotiating with losers. That's like literally you're in the boxing ring and you knock somebody out, right? You knock somebody out 
And then you go over and you, you, you negotiate with that person to have a draw in the fight. You just knocked the person out. Repub Republicans just lost an election. Why are you negotiating with them? They are the losers. Lahu Sahur. I'm just trying to bring balance, just some balance. If I can seize this moment and start healing our country, oh, helping yeah. our president bring our country together, listening to all healer. sides, and making a decision that doesn't intend to harm anybody. It happened to come down to 50-50. This doesn't happen that often in our political posturing or our governing. And, and, and it, I hope it doesn't come around again for a long time. We need to find a way to work together. That's all I'm trying to do. I'm not taking advantage of any moment at all. The Senate is the most unique body of government in the world, of governing body in the world. It's deliberate. I'm supporting the filibuster. I'm going to continue to support the filibuster. I think it defines who we are as a Senate. I'll make it harder to get rid of it, but it should be painful if you want to use it. If Republicans continue to be unified in opposition and don't have an open mind, then you may change your mind? Well, I'm not going to change my mind on the filibuster. I'll change my mind if we need to go to a, to a reconciliation to where we gotcha. have to get something done once I know they have process into it. But I'm not going to go there until my Republican friends have the ability to have their say also. It takes listening to the minority to make sure that the majority is getting it right. Oh, okay. Where do you stand on that? Do you think we should be listening to Republicans? Do you think we should be kowtowing to Republicans who have big corporate donors firmly in their, in their viewfinder? That's who we should be supporting? Defense contractors, big corporate donors, oil and gas companies. That's what you should be supporting? While millions of Americans are on the threat of losing their homes, can't pay their rent, can't put food on the table, have had to leave their job in order to take care of their children because they are homeschooled right now. But you want to negotiate with Republicans. Okay. Once again, as Davis Sirota says, how to stop the Manchin presidency. Let's raise the minimum wage. Demand that they put this in this bill over the next 24 hours. Will they have a backbone to do it? Or will they kowtow to the mansion side, the mansion presidency? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Our eyes on Joe Manchin, our eyes on Senator Roy Blunt. It's a topsy-turvy craziness going on right now in the Senate. I wanted to bring that to you. Please smash that like button and subscribe. Remember, tomorrow morning, we're back at 9 a.m. Eastern time with a new show live. So please join us for our live edition of the show. And also, don't forget that, of course, you can subscribe to our daily morning newsletter. Subscribe tonight so you'll get the newsletter first thing in the morning. We send it out about 6.30 in the morning Eastern time. You can enjoy it over your cup of coffee. Just put your email address in by going to morninginvest.com. And then you'll receive a little welcome email. You have to confirm your email so we know you're not spam. And you'll receive a little welcome email dingus. It'll be on our list first thing in the morning. See, like this, like Grover, he signed up. Click on that. That's what the welcome email will look like right there. Boom, boom. Very easy to do. And we will welcome you to the family. Much love to all of you. We will see you bright and early first thing tomorrow. Bye now.